Neon Genesis Evangelion. Originally released in 1995, since then it has amassed a cult following and is revered as one of the best pieces of anime to ever be released. But is that true? Well, let's talk about the premise. Evangelion is about a desperate race against time to stave off an invading force of creatures called the Angels. They seem to have the common goal of wiping humans off the face of the Earth. The only means of fighting back being the use of large mechanical robots piloted by a single person. Easy enough to understand, but Evangelion isn't your standard popcorn flick mecha anime. It's about a young boy being called upon as one of the few people who can pilot the mechs. Shinji Ikari the focus of the show isn't about Shinji being the Earth's champion. It's about the cruel psychological torment of being completely unqualified while also being the only person who can save the planet. Alright, let's touch on the anime's positive aspects. Every moment of action within the show is pulse pounding. A typical mistake in more modern anime is having an abundance of action that lacks any weight. Evangelion doesn't suffer from this. The anime explains that, to pilot the mechs, the controller has to be psychologically linked, with the downside of the pilot being able to feel the damage that happens to the mech, as if it was happening to them. Seeing Shinji scream in pain when the arm of his mech is broken is haunting. In nearly every fight, whichever pilot we're following is shown as having to soldier through an obscene amount of pain and trauma. All while the viewer knows the show isn't above quickly killing a character. Another fantastic aspect, instead of the nowadays expected trope of serious or dark storylines, frequently interrupted by plenty of comic relief, I usually call back to Demon Slayer when I mention this, and you know what, Demon Slayer is a phenomenal show, but there are a lot of moments that just don't fit with the tone. Evangelion has very few lighthearted moments, which, when they do show up, always come from eccentric characters. It almost comes off as what someone would act like if they wanted to lighten the mood for other people rather than the viewer, which I think is an important contrast. Now, 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 my dear viewer, it's time to get to the negatives. I've watched Neon Genesis Evangelion twice now. In both times, I would binge watch like 10 episodes and then forget about it for some time. Mostly because unless I treated it like I was watching a long movie, it was kind of a struggle to get through. First off, the main character Shinji is so incredibly annoying that it gives me a headache to think about. He's not even annoying in a typical way. An example, acting erratically or being childish or just plain stupid. He's none of those things. He's just weak and inconsistent. Sure, he soldiers through the stress of some horrible circumstances. But at the same time, he's aware of his importance, but quits at least one time and just runs off. I can respect not really wanting to be a part of the whole save the world thing. If he was a selfish character, it would make sense to just quit. The thing is, he isn't selfish. He never fails to be nicer than Jesus. And he also never fails to put his life on the line when he doesn't really need to. So it's just bizarre and annoying when he acts in contrived ways. Another thing about Shinji is he falls into the Japanese male inferiority complex, a thing I totally made up just now, but go with me for a moment. Shinji is introduced to another pilot, Asuka Langley. Is it Asuka or Asuka? I, I, I don't forget about it. I don't know. If I want to describe her easily for you, she's a bitch. She is self-absorbed beyond belief. She's completely detached from reality, and she tortures Shinji emotionally, all the goddamn time. Both of them are 14. Now, when I was 14, I was an annoying little prick, but that's beside the point. Let's say I had a hateful, bratty, egocentric roommate at 14. I would be struggling to contain slapping that hoe for all the shit she tries to pull. Now I understand this isn't really a criticism of Shinji, but rather the writers that present him. It's just Shinji apologetically puts up with this cretin regardless of everything. It makes you want to reach through the screen, grab him, and scream, GROW A PAIR, damn it! Do you feel guilty kissing a girl on the anniversary of your mother's death? Worried that mommy would be looking at you from heaven? Oh my god, Shinji. If someone said that to me, I would be gritting my teeth. 
holding back the irresistible urge to commit a heinous act of domestic violence. You seriously didn't bring lunch for me today? Well, I, I had a lot of homework yesterday. I just didn't have time. I don't care about your homework. That's no excuse. Now, I get what the fans are going to say. She's a sundere. She secretly likes Shinji. She looks up to him. No. No. Okay, I can see why you can make that point. And if at some point they get together, I would feel better about it. But as far as I know, all Shinji gets is the opportunity to splooge on her hospital bed when she's in a coma. Which is a kind of funny if you think of it as a sort of revenge. <laughs> and I really don't care about Shinji's inferiority complex, at least how he feels. Because he's not an idiot. Clearly, he should realize that part of the reason Asuka treats him like garbage is because he acts like garbage. Be more like the devil may care dude she's in love with. Don't put up with this shit. I mean, I, I, it, I don't know why he does. All of this would make sense if Shinji was just a complete idiot. But he's not. They even explain that the reason he's such a weakling is that he wants everyone to be to to like him and you know what that that would make sense if the whole beta male routine literally ever worked for him it, it just never does so <laughs> okay shinji aside another bad aspect i'll bring light to is uh well it's a common trait shared by a lot of sci-fi type animes for example akira they use a reliance on confusing the viewers so much by all the random science jargon that's thrown around that they cease to question anything. While in Akira, they make sure you understand just enough in both the manga and the movie that you don't feel completely lost, a good chunk of Evangelion is science, and it's also total gibberish. Maybe I'm just too dumb or unfocused to understand some of these highbrow themes, but my goodness, if more than a few scenes make almost no sense whatsoever, you might be making a few mistakes. I could go on for a long time about my personal gripes, but I think my opinion is represented well enough. Do I recommend this anime? That's a tough question. I'll give you some advice that I don't usually. I implore you to try three episodes. If you don't absolutely love it by then, then you should probably not continue. However, I'll also bring to light that so many people love this show that it spawned countless remakes, movies, etc. So maybe, just maybe, my opinion is invalid. Woo, alrighty, that was, uh, that was fun and also tiring. But uh, I, I thank you so much for getting to the end of this video. Please like, comment, or subscribe, you know, because I enjoyed that. Anyway, see you next time. <laughs>